good afternoon ladies and gentlemen welcome to tech Geek webinar series our endeavor to empower techies we believe that sharing of knowledge is the key to enhance our skills and grow us as professionals with this principle in mind we have initiated a series of webinars conducted by industry experts to give you all a crisp insight of various domains the topic of today's session is continued focus on IT security our guest speaker today is mr. Sharath M Irani Chief IT Systems and Security, Forbes Marshall Group of Companies. Earlier handling customer care in Dart Mail, ICNet, and Arshna Telecom Services, Mr. Sharath has about 21 years of experience in IT. His key focus is on strategy, creating business value with business IT strategy, customer satisfaction, and IT lead business innovation and transformation, driving technology and enabling business with improved customer satisfaction while reducing operational IT budgets. He has experience in leading teams across diverse technologies and systems ensuring effective adoption and benefit. Sharath was voted as the most respectable CIO in India by peer CIOs conducted by CIO Association of India 2012. He is also the winner and recipient of many awards and accolades for pioneering business IT implementation. Mr. Sharath Irani is the co-convener of CII IT in manufacturing. So without further delay, I introduce you all to our guest speaker. Over to Mr. Irani. Thank you very much, Mohani. That was a good uh, introduction of the startup. Uh, thanks for that, having this wonderful uh, platform to sharing the knowledge and, and, and giving uh, the knowledge across the fraternity. I think it's uh, do more, do IT is very much relevant in this case. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks for joining us today afternoon. This is about uh, security, which is an ongoing aspect. Uh, as Moidi already explained, my name is Sharad. I'm handling uh, IT success and security at Postman Puna. We are talking about today is about continued focus on IT security. The continued focus means it is nothing new or nothing has been generated for today or nothing has been especially getting over on this topic. This is an ongoing work in progress sort of security aspect. When it comes to advanced target attacks, which are now the recent trend in the security and the vulnerability, uh, is our organization really as protected as we think? The short answer is probably not. Advanced target attacks are more sophisticated than ever before. This session explores why they have been so effective and how we protect our data and intellectual property against the changing threat landscape. Many organizations have probably been successfully attacked already and probably don't know of it. Not everyone is highly public in announcing their success in stealing the information. There are a couple of examples and the statistics to which I covered during the presentation, which will give the more clarity about what is the threat, what is uh, the trend of going in the vulnerability aspect, how we can maintain secure and safe considering all those security angles, considering the different solutions available in the market. Coming to that point, uh, the, the term APT, which is for advanced person threat, is anything more than a buzzword? Let us go and analyze and see what does it mean about. Typically, such attacks give a technical sophistication for careful reconnaissance and talking a low and slow approach that is difficult to detect, but which has a high likelihood of success. Attackers only need to trick a single employee into opening a piece of malware that exploits a zero-day vulnerability, thus giving them an access to not just employees PC but potentially the entire corporate network. With this, the general operating system are totally different and everyone is already aware of the vulnerability and the attacks and the anti-defense or anti-attack defense softwares which are available in terms of personal firewalls or antivirus on different platforms. 
but looking at the recent trend, many users are now switching over to the Apple Mac OS platform. And that has been still viewed as absolutely safe, primarily because Apple has assured all the users for many years that the system is more secure than PCs. However, the recent analysis and the trend has challenged that assertion. There are significant numbers of Mac users across the globe in the different levels of the organization. Botnet have attracted the attention of experts in quarter one was the zombie network built of Mac OS X computers. In March 2012, Flashback is one of the malware infected around 7 lakh Apple operating system across the globe. So now if we talk about the continued focus on IT security. What we have basically is a traditional way of having uh, better firewalls, boundary intrusion detections, critical offsite capacity, compliance and certifications for a different level of industries in the world and different uh, segments and the different structures based on the industry we are in. That gives us a fair idea about and the confidence as well saying that we are secure. This, this is basically considering on the traditional focus on what we build across our network, our data. But in my opinion, some of it is a myth as well. IT staff may not essentially relate as in security staff. Security, I mean information security staff. Compliance failure is the main source of the risk. Being compliant is being safe. In my opinion, clearly it may not be necessary saying that being a compliant is being a safe. Being a compliant is maintaining a level of operation which is in a satisfactory manner and delivering it to the level what is expected in the industry. The current industry trend of the accessibility is almost everyone, everything, every accessibility through the internet. Until the basic internet is fundamentally open facts about this is we, we may not be able to rule out the facts as we don't know what is on our own network. What is Mr. Sharath, uh, I Mr. Facts. Sharath, I just wanted to interrupt to your voice. Your is what not very clear. Can you be a, a bit more loud? Okay. Sorry for that. The internet is fundamentally open. The facts that we don't know what is on our net, what's on our net is bad, and existing practices aren't finding everything. Any antivirus software, anti malware software, or even the firewalls or any other things, they are unable to find everything and anything what is there in our network. That is interior. Basically, it starts from the internal, and that is faster than the response. This needs to be pointed here. The faster is the threat than the response. Now with the mobility available, having every device at a different level, different devices in terms of mobile phones, laptops, and etc., boundary is no more relevant here. We can access our own resource and data from anywhere, anytime in the loop. Only the required thing is having an internet connectivity to a specific device. We don't know what is on our partners net because we have to have intersection to many of our partners in many of the activities, in many of the deliveries. That point of intersection is not very clear whether it is clear enough or is there something going wrong or is something to be done on that. It is not very clear. Compromises occur despite the defects. Even having individual firewalls on each device, individual antivirus on every device, Compromising the security is definitely there and it's going to happen. Depending on the motivation behind any particular threat, it can be nuisance, costly, or mission threatening. So for some of the attacks recorded in the world, some of the data is already published on the net. Some of the data is available for the research. 
some of it is widely available and some of them we are already saying, saying that many of them are publishing. So a couple of exercises, a couple of tests which are already been published, I will just go through uh, one of uh, the contents over there. If you look at uh, one of the most recorded and published uh, cyber attacks in the world is one of the railway networks which was disrupted for cyber attack. The report says investigators at the TSA reportedly identified three IP addresses which led them to conclude that the attacks were intentional and originated from overseas. They would not, however, mention the IP origin. And one of the second example in the same slide was about the utility system which got uh, compromised by the Stuxnet at a malware. The malware is called as a Stuxnet. Exploits a Windows flaw to find the steel industrial data from the supervisory control and data acquisition which is commonly known as a SCADA system running on a Siemens semantic WinCC or PCX7 software. This was a dedicated targeted attack to get information from the SCADA systems on a different uh, applications and different uh, level of drawings and designs. Third of the example in the same slide is about uh, the exploits zero day law in a Windows kernel. Just to give an understanding about uh, the zero day, a zero day or a zero hour attack or a threat is an attack that exploits a previously unknown vulnerability, meaning that an attack occurs on a day zero of the awareness of the vulnerability. This means the developers have had a zero days to address and patch the vulnerability. Just given the latest example, last week one of the Java updates was made available in the industry to download and uh, upgrade. At the same time, when it was got downloaded and upgraded, in the system, at the same evening, it found that there is a vulnerability and uh, the hackers used that to get into the system and later in the same day, at the end of the day, another patch was released. This is what the zero day is meaning. So now, which turns into the latest technology in the threat, which is known as an advanced system threat, no one was, we call it as an APT. We'll, we'll talk about slightly on the technology aspect in the vulnerability in the attacks. APD is a very personal. The target is well identified. The mode of operation is well identified. And this is very personal. The attacking party carefully selects the target based on political, commercial, and the security interests. Social engineering is often employed. And this is persistent also. If the target shows the resistance, the attacker will not leave, but rather change the strategy and deploy a new type of attack against the same target and will continue to explode till they get the data. Control is very much focused. APTs are focused on gaining control of crucial infrastructure such as power grid, communication systems, especially international security systems. APT also target data and compromise of intellectual property and sensitive national security information. It's automated, but on a small scale. Automation is used to enhance the power of an attack against a single target. It's one layer, one party owns and controls all hacking roles and responsibilities. Then what is APT? Advance means the hacker can operate in full spectrum of computer intrusion. They can use the most pedestrian publicly available exploit against a well-known vulnerability. If it is already a well-known vulnerability, there will be a patches, there will be a security measures, there will be a software to fill the gap and to continue the operation. So this advance will take care of against that and vulnerabilities develop custom expression depending on the target posture. Persistence means it's formally tasked to accomplish the mission. 
they are not opportunistic intruders. Like an intelligence unit, they receive directives and work to satisfy the masters. Persistence does not necessarily mean they need to constantly execute malicious code on a victim computer, rather they maintain the level of interaction needed to execute their objectives. Threat is basically developing a code and when it is required, then only it gets executed till then it keeps silently lying on one machine and giving the control to the victim and read the stolen data when required. The key message against this APT has advanced beyond the existing controls. So antivirus, uh, ID, IDS, and IPS basically works with some signatures behind some, some of the things which are already known in the past. Some of them are already executed in the past. Based on that, they get the signatures developed and any kind of suspicious equivalent to that code will get identified as an attack or identified as a malicious. Here it is an undetectable using traditional signature based security protection mechanism. Social engineering and social networks are used to target sensitive roles or individuals. The goal has now changed to establish listing the footholds. If a context awareness becomes a key next generation capability of all security protection technologies. Incident response procedure needs to be improved and pre -realized. We need to be aware that what is going to be good for the network, what to protect, how to protect, what to measure, and how to measure. Because the motivation is changing now. They are no more hackers. They are professionals. These professionals are well-funded, well-organized, working in a group. APT is always a strategy. Continued access and continuous theft maintains a much lower profile, remains undetected during and after. The file will be lying on our own machine. It will not be inactive. We will not know whether it is really vulnerable, whether it is really an infection because of the because it is not containing any of the standard signatures which are getting detected. The most damage in the long run is the most usage of the new technologies like SQL injection and DDoS attacks which the hackers or the professional hackers do use in stealing the data and the intellectual property. Typical attack goals is significant financial motivation. It is purely devised effective attack strategies centered on a penetrating and the most commonly deployed security controls. Penetration, delay in detection, internal uh, footholds, putting it in a longer time and the good duration for undetected manner and target entity, everything will conclusively make an advanced persistence threat. Custom or dynamically generated malware for the initial breach and data gathering phase. And then the secondary code will get executed when the person or group of members in any targeted industry or an organization, the second layer will get activated and then it will give an control to the attacker. Typical characteristics if we consider on, on, on the, uh, the, the layer of how it is getting activated and how the people are involved in this attack and then how it gets compromised. It is well organized. Social media and the social networks, human interests are well considered and taken care of. And it is very much targeted and malicious codes, like I said earlier, zero-day exploit codes and rapidly generated polymorphic malware are used in getting the goal-driven end target machine to be captured. The end result, looking at it, is a profit, a cost service, denial of service, and information compromise. To get the target to be working, malware delivery is very much required the target. Use of multi-state executable is really practiced. Specifically targeted aim or a victim will be getting those kind of executables in a different email or a 
contextual target selection what is the interest based on the social uh, networking or social human interest which are studied earlier and considered in sending them across and then making them as an victim. If you look at the vendor's criteria for classification in protecting this APT, a target is basically uh, a particular entity who may be a military, political, technical, economic. Specific mission to accomplish is target selection is very much one of the major required points. The willing to invest time and money, as we said, this advanced persistence and by definition is not one time or a regular attack which will happen and then vanish. They keep on waiting for the right time to be getting to think to capture all that information required. Keep silently, watch, monitor and take the control. That's how it works. It basically revolves around sponsorship, complex activities in terms of expect the full spectrum of the attack methods like email phishing, website malware, trojans and many more things are exercised here and the persistence is getting inside to the industry or a specific target then it gets execution in terms of evasive which will get evaded by that time and then they keep on removing the proofs what they have. In typical attack life cycle, if we consider uh, the different steps, we can measure the category uh, into uh, seven major steps. So first and foremost is planning and then reconnaissance. Phase number two will be initial intrusion. Phase number three is an establishing backdoor entry, obtain credentials, install utilities, data exfiltration, and maintain the persistence. Maintain the persistence use the diverse set of malware and communication channels to maintain access. Install different frozen that uses an alternate CNC, it's a control and command. Once the machine becomes a victim, that machine will become a control and command center for the attacker. That machine will be used for the CNC protocol and that will be get used to move further within an organization. Then that will be getting used to install Trojan service set to call CNC maybe for a couple of days or a couple of days, a couple of months and then the data is getting captured using the same command and control machine moving inside the organization at a different level. Data is getting captured, transferred to the destination in a readable format. Then the second and last step will be a swift cleanup. Focus in avoiding the detection. That's a very important structure of the APDs. Once it is being taken out of the data, tracing it out back or reaching out to that attacker is very difficult because removing the evidence of the intrusion is one of the major intentions and eliminating evidence of who was behind the intrusion was the major focus. Cleanup may involve planting or manipulating data in the environment for the purpose of misdirection. It may mislead to saying that someone else is doing that or something else is doing that. It just mislead to the resource. If you look at the attack attack life cycle in a more technical way and more in technology, malware initiatives a connection to the APD actors infrastructure then there will be different flows which was within the network and that will be elevated to the privileges to collect the additional authentication material like AD. It is basically an active directory and expansion of access persistence. If one machine is shut down or play, there is always another machine next to it or maybe in the same network which will get all of the same level of the structure available that will get pops up and then that will become a command and control machine to the attacker. If you look at compromising process at the user side, how, how it is getting, uh, giving an access to the attacker, basically uh, we as a user, we get an email with something advertised or some word or some PDF file attached with that. And those will ask for something to click or open the file with some very interesting message in that or some very interesting or capturing subject which will say that 
we we make tend to you know go to open the attachments and then see that is yes, let us see what is there in the content and this could contain the link or a link in the email itself and then this will get downloaded and the infected document will get open once the document is open the victim's machine becomes compromised additional malicious code often referred as a second stage is subsequently downloaded and installed if they click the link or view open the document unknowingly because these are not getting identified by the standard antivirus or any clearing tools which are available because these are not based on the signature this is totally a new considering the vulnerability of that specific machine at the level of patch where we can get the loopholes and then find a way the infection and then get the required data in hand at this stage attack might be considered as an apt if it is already a signature based infection our antivirus or any other detection tool will pop up saying that this is probably infected we want to still allow or it will already get clean and give a message it is deleted by cleaning something like that the victim um, victim's computer gets under the control of attackers that becomes clt command and control this is how user as a user we give the control to the attackers and then we give them a control of our own machine when when we we open up on the ad, attachment or going to the link and then getting uh, the infectious file getting installed on our machine what we do is we announce the availability of the machine to the attacker saying that yes this is my ip this is my location this is my machine name all all those things will get started broadcasting on its own and it generates a huge number of traffic and it gives all the relevant information to the person who is getting and that infectious tool getting implanted on our machine and then the execution of the malware will starts as command which is controlled by the attacker and can do these things like an information gathering or like user account gathering and data indexing and data copying and uploading blah 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 all that information required what is required and it's already targeted right in the industry is known what is the information available for that industry you already know and by attacking the specific machine we already know that what are the different credentials we have within that organization we the attacker will start capturing the data what is very relevant and then from wherever it is within the network considering the study and uh, the structure of the malware the way it is getting executed some of the statistics are really interesting file size is very light as hardly 122 kb and this is packaged in such a way that the standard uh, packages are not uh, detecting that this is an infection most common apts which are already in the market and which everyone probably most of us have already experienced the file names are acc host.exe which is most common i would say that it is floating in every machine looking at these names and the, the executable files even if we see it we tend to over see it because these sounds to be some system files or something which is very relevant to the system i explore dot ex i print dot dll dlls are basically system files as default it is uh, named and when the def 32 not dll these are the typical and very common apt file names which are under floating apt a malware avoid the detection through the outbound http connections process injections and service persistence if you look at uh, the right hand side of uh, the screen it it shows that what is the port it is commonly used because generally port 80 or port 443 is widely available for the traffic which are generally open in any of the firewalls or in any of the communication or in any of the networks 
these APTs are used these channels to get into and 100% APT macros made only outbound connections because as a user I have already clicked I have already got because I have the permission to access the internet that file is already available with me through my email now I am an outbound traffic I am generating as a user so that message and every other message or the data which is flowing is an outbound generally the policies are defined so going uh, to scan the outbound traffic is generally free if you look at most targeted industries 23 25% is generalized here and there 23% which is a major contribution is communication 18% is aerospace computer hardware and software is 14% Major contribution here is energy, oil and gas, 10%. Electronics also equally shares the 10%. These are overall view of the attack. Growth of the attacks, if you look at the some of the study from Symantec in Worldwide in 2011, almost around 1000 plus are blocked in the month of September. The statistics says most popular information stealers in the second half is on the right hand side. That bot is 39%. Sanity was mostly hit across the organization is 34%. Look at the potential impact. We are talking about advanced attacks and advanced persistence and the threat inclusive. If you if you look at the generally about the potential impact we, we, we do not want our business to be the weakest link in the supply chain and it may be that our company is not in the primary target list but attacker may be use our organization as a static stone to attack and the next company or another company somewhere in the world information is power and the attacker know about this the successful attacks can result in significant financial advantage for the cyber criminal behind them. The challenge now lies in understanding whether our organization is likely to be targeted in this way and that can be very difficult to know. Access to the intellectual property and strategic intelligence can give them a huge advantage in a competitive market. Then, then what are the strategic plans in the security approach? We can, we can use the APT life cycle which we discussed in a couple of slides back which will help us to devise a protection and detection mechanism. We may need to have all of them which is already available in the network today but that needs to be strategically planned where needs to be placed, what needs to be identified, what needs to be scanned. One of the major component of this is this one ongoing integration and sharing of security intelligence among the security controls is one of the aspects because this generally talks about people policy technology or people process technology which is a basic pyramid of any organization or the IT structure. Second to that the highest importance I can give it to or the part of the approach in a strategic security is making an awareness within the organization. Social engineering techniques through training and education, making the members aware what will happen, what needs to be done, how it needs to be taken care, what to execute, when to execute. Even when we communicate on email, whether do we check all the recipients or do we blindly say reply all or it takes into account that some autocomplete feature will come into play and then someone else will get added. Those are the things which we need to be really giving an awareness and training under education, our own employees, our own members, our own team members to make that defense in that strategy across multiple security controls. Even the sending an email may not come under the threat or an attack, but that may process lead into attack of getting some information or we may opening up some information where it is unwanted. 
now. We look at some of the graphics, uh, no, no, not the graphics, graphics I already covered, sorry, some of the studies and the surveys which have been taken uh, across the globe through IDG media and which they keep on doing it on time to time basis, some of the results or the outcome are really encouraging and some of them are really interesting. And then in the second quarter of 2012, it has been conducted a survey across the industry worldwide and the result says on the topic of what types of security incidents a breach or a downtime occurred. If we see that India which is in a LO, the highest percentage which is 11.8 percent is because of removable storage. We use USB pen drive hard disk, what not, everything which works with the USB. Storage is the removable storage which we switch between one machine to other, which we may take from one organization to other organization. That is an highest hit in making the breach or a downtime 11.8 percent. The next highest recorded is a data exploit in is 10.8 percent in India. Next contributor is a mobile device, smartphones, tablet computers, which are exploited is 9.7 percent. All in all, if we see that 20 percent, 18 percent, 17 percent, 20 percent, these are all the different kind of exploits. The major contribution is in two areas. One is in removable and second one is in human exploit. Third one is in network. So. What are we saying is removable disk and removable storage is one of the major components which will give us an possible exposure to the attackers to make it vulnerable and then attack our own network. In the same continued survey, there was a second question asked, did you report the incidents publicly, whether it is required by law or not? Interestingly. 56 percent worldwide said no. Maybe because of a couple of reasons. One is the threat because of this reputation going down. I may get uh, withhold and not able to disclose I have been attacked. And some of it is to keep within ourselves because of the data got exploited which may be very crucial which is very relevant in the business of the industry. I need to safeguard that. The ultimate result which came out as a survey is 56 percent said no, they have not declared. 44 percent declared because of some enforcement, maybe law or some stakeholders, some shareholders which are demanding time to time. But if you consider in India alone, 12 percent only said yes, 20 percent said no. So even the making it public or publishing that and the hacking incident is also somewhat concerned and measure in uh, concern to the industry as concern which has to be taken care of very seriously. And the second of the survey area which was covered as how was your organization impacted by the security incident? What is the loss? How did it hamper the business? If we consider here is 12 percent is a financial loss. The ultimate end result will term, term that a financial loss because whatever we lose, it ends up in the finance, in the rupee value. Look at the worldwide statistics also, it is 28 percent is a financial, whereas intellectual property theft is 24 percent. In India alone, this intellectual property talks about 11 percent. Here, if we talk about over average fraud is 15 percent and the loss of shareholders to value is 40 percent. Ultimately all these results into the loss in terms of reputation, loss in terms of the value, loss in terms of intellectual property. So these are the concerns in India and across globe what has been studied. These are the results really amazing. Then what can we do to protect? How, how do you how do you uh, look at you know controlling these kind of attacks? Uh, how do we be how we get into safer zone 
into safeguarding our own business and intellectual property or the organization. What we can do is our network must be defensible, hostile, and fertile. These are three major areas that I consider which are pretty much required in, in today's context. What I mean by defensible is we need a real-time access to all of the resources what we have internally. I presume, uh, if not all, uh, most of us are aware of the network and protocols and topologies in terms of what I'm using in this slide. Active Directory, DHCP, VPN, proxy, etc. is a part of the network, which we need to have a real-time access to reach and analyze at any given point in time. Defensible also means we should know our boundaries. Even though earlier I said there is no boundary, we know that where all our members or we have given the access on the different devices that can be defined as a boundary. So that's a source point. Know what should be in our network, what should not be on our network. Segment the network in using the DMZ, uh, the demilitarized zone wherever possible. If we want to give an access to the outside world in terms of exploding or you know keeping it open to the internet. Where there is a firewall, I strongly believe and feel that there has to be an IDS and there has to be network monitoring. Standardized hardware and software know where a calls authenticate, which device, which is the base, from where the authentication mechanism, be it an AD or be it some files or be it some any other mode of mechanism in authentication. That should be very clearly indicated and we should be able to have that captured and unlocked. By me, I, what I meant by hostile is we should have the baseline for the network traffic. Whether the network is anti-dendry and then a regular term, a regular activity, my network is activating on a 50% load. In a peak load, my network will not go beyond 50%. That baseline is very much required. And that has to be monitored regularly. And when we see, if at all there is an exponential growth, then there is a suspect. And we can aim to say that there is something extraordinary activity going on that will help us to drill down to the specific point saying that, yes, these are the problematic areas we need to look at. Do not allow public facing devices connect directly to the internal domain controllers. Limit administrative privilege to users develop data collection and analysis guidelines. By that means, ultimate goal, what I see is, make it as difficult as possible for an attacker to compromise. They should not be allowed inside our network as much as possible, hide it. By means of fertile, the essential component of the network should generate effective logs, which will have to be captured and recorded and be used for the analysis at any given point in time. Networks should be a breeding ground for forensic and investigative data. All these proxy authentication logs, host based firewalls, everything. That has to be captured, kept, and analyzed. The investigation required in for basically is develop an overview of an enterprise and infrastructure and capture all of them listed and talked about earlier. Centralize the storage of key logs. Keep it at one side. Basically, what it terms to be as an SIEA, which is need of the day, and implement robust key logging, logging components so that we can able to explore, analyze, read all of them, which covers even the VPN connectors, DHCPs, DNS, all of them. What is uh, the basic guideline to uh, data collection time frame? It basically is four hours for data collection. And this duplication has to complete in two days. IDS log collection, which should happen in four hours. Firewall log collection generally should happen in four hours. It gives real time as far as possible in a realistic manner. And how do you analyze? Review the live data in uh, four hours max, in-depth analysis, and then inspection. Review of forensic images, maybe it will take two to three days. IDS logs, it has to be real-time alerting. Some some mechanism or some tool has to be there. And then other activities will flow down as required. 
Then another approach which we talked slightly about in the general awareness or making an educational process internal to the organization, it is not really an either or scenario, it's a must. We have to educate, we have to be educated, we have to be in line with what is happening. The APT history shows an initial entry vector to the network to the spear phishing. Ultimately, it sends an email with an attachment or a link which they will click that will get captured in because of outbound traffic. It's much easier to gain the entry through the tricking an employee, click on a link, than fighting against any of the firewall. Once the link or the person is already inside the network, going on is very easy. Good awareness program or enlightening our own staff to the dangers of spear phishing is need of the day. Some of some of incidents quickly quickly uh, run through it. Will not take much of a time here, and this is very much Indian context. Chinese hackers steal Indian Navy secrets with thumb drive virus. It said China-based hackers broke into the computer systems of India's Eastern Naval Command, where India's first nuclear submarine is undergoing trials. It is basically using thumb drive which was used by one of the employees and transferring it to something else. In that, the actual data is captured and when it got transferred to some other machine, it got transmitted across the internet to the servers in China. This is very much an ending case. And another example here, a hackers attacked a FBI website, crash it for a day. It was a DNS, the domain name system attack where the hacker tried entering the website from a single internet protocol address multiple times, jamming the bandwidth. They say it's due to multiple requests received from the hacker's IP address, genuine entrants were unable to access. Ultimately, the end result was a hack, which was shown as not available to the actual users when required. One. Yeah, here we go. These are uh, different other examples which will not go into the details. That's another thing which is very interesting. You can go through this link later, uh, probably if it is available. Uh, the Yahoo Voice website was recently hacked and uh, many uh, login and passwords got you know, compromised. And that file is really available to download. It's a 70 MB file. It's available to download. And you can check if any one of your names are if you are really using a new voice, then it's really available. That's where we stand. Uh, the basic emphasis here, what I want to make with the security assurance, I'm not intending to make the system hacker proof. This is an ongoing, as I really said, even from the beginning. It, but surely device mechanism, which can, to a large extent, do and protect the environment. And we can, we can have that security in, in most desired manner. It is all about the ability to expect the expected before we are ready to expect the unexpected. Advanced persistent threats can be defeated very much, but with having a different uh, mechanism uh, as what we talked about, anticipate potential problems, preempt through proactive measures, protect against considerable damages, ensure recovery and restoration. You can predict the future based on the past. The enemy can't change all his techniques, and once we have learned about our adversary, we can deal better with the oncoming waves of the attack. In conclusion, what I would like to say here is the APT is an evidence problem. No target is too small or too large or too obscure, not too well known or too vulnerable. It's not spy versus spy, but spy versus everyone. This is a war of attrition against an enemy with extensive resources. It is a long fight, one that never ends. This is an ongoing process. Again, I'm repeating the same. They steal information to achieve economic, political, and strategic advantage. They establish, maintain, and occupy force in their targets environment. Some of the studies say they steal between 40 billion to 50 billion in and an intellectual property from U.S. organizations each year. 
to, to come coming to uh, conclusion uh, in all in all uh, as attacks have migrated from targeting systems via exploits to targeting people security breaches are growing in number and sophistication therefore it is no longer acceptable to rely exclusively on preventive measures before I, I, I close my presentation I would like to give a certain hints and uh, some other figures and facts which have already published from some of the famous antivirus uh, software in, in the world it says that 41% uh, uh, increase in web-based attacks considering 2010 and 2011 and zero day vulnerabilities were discovered in 2011 are uh, only 8 compared to 14 in 2010 and 50% targeted attacks were aimed at companies with less than 2500 employees so there is no big or small everyone is targeted the another important is you are more likely to be infected by malware placed on a legitimate website than one created by a hacker. Uh, the facts and figures are all right. If we look at slightly on an, our entertainment arena, where we, we go to the different movies and enjoy the time, if you look at carefully in some of them, one of the most uh, recommendation I can give you here is Ocean's Eleven is name of the movie. The plot probably included a large team of specialists as well as a great deal of patience of planning by the bad guys. Whereas there was a, a systematic exploitation of weakness discovered through the extensive research, the penetrators were less smart, well organized, well funded and very patient. In a nutshell, what I can say is this is an APT and the, the, this is an old, old movie. If you come to the slightly later part, Die Hard, Die Hard which was released in 2007, this also shows the, some part of it, uh, the adverse persistence threat, which uh, John McKinley uh, was around and then with the support of White Hat had successfully defeated the bad guys. Oh, I don't go to that book in English movie. That's also an interesting uh, reminder for me. I hope everyone might have seen that Ekka Tiger, which is an Hindi movie starring Salman Khan and Katrina. Uh, there also the decoding and the message flowing which are getting tracement. It is symbolically shown, not into the depth detail, but all these comes under you know uh, the safety and security measures and how that is being getting tracked. But unfortunately, Salman or Matthew Lake only exists in the movie screen, not not in the real life. But we have to live with uh, what is black eyes or what is we call it upon uh, the day and need of the security for an IT fraternity. Uh, by this, I, I would like to conclude my uh, presentation. And thanks for giving the time and thanks for joining us. I think it is dot four at my watch. I have given a one hour slot. I have covered that. I think it is interesting to uh, share my knowledge with an experience. Uh, what I have taken into uh, the research, what I am doing on the EP. Uh, thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for joining. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much. <coughs> I just, I'm, I'm here. Yeah. Well, thanks. Ready? Thanks for the insightful presentation, Mr. Irani. Are you there? Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. there. Let's quickly take up the questions now. Please read out the questions from the questions pane and the answers. Questions, questions, questions. Okay, I am exploring. So I am unlocking it. I am enlarging it now. It's not enlarging. I have to drag it, right? Okay, here we go. I am dragging, there are still more. The first question goes here, what are the newest threats now and how common people can have a problem? 
a question by Somalia Das. Already left. But anyway, uh, this topic we already cover what kind of different threats available and how we can get uh, out of it, what the things and the measurements we can take care of that. I talked more in detail. I think I think it has already answered in the presentation itself. And the second question here is, did the gas malware attack an anonymous attack on uh, bigdaddy.com so that cyber attacks are becoming more politically motivated? Yes. This question is by one uh, Vishwan Sharma. Yes, these are politically motivated and these are uh, organized and these are uh, from the different aspect of the showing the presence of the attacker and even in some of the cases the same anonymous got uh, hacked from some of our own Indian websites when the, the Indian government was talking about banning some of the websites to show their presence or show some resistance these are getting planned. And this bigdiary.com is still not declared as an attack because the company itself is not saying so. But the discussions are on and this it seems to be very much politically motivated. And then the next question here is what should be the expertise of the guy whom we can hire as a security manager in an organization? This question is from one Mr. Ashish Kaushi. Consider the educational background, consider uh, the area he has worked in terms of securing, what is the hands-on level of handling the firewalls, ideas, the routers, and the network part of it, even the proxies of the world. It, it is mandatory then, the keeping in mind, keep the awareness updated. How to protect proactively is very much important. In my opinion, hands-on guy will be in best to the organization, which will know that how to protect and how to change the strategy when there is a crisis. The next question, can you suggest some network monitoring tools? Next question, my humans to Jangrao. And there are many available. There are some of them are open source, some of them are paid ones. There are many. You, you can do a research on the net and you will find many. Uh, I am not here to promote any of the tools, so I will not go into the detail of this, but uh, there are tools available. Are virtual servers as a better advantage over the physical servers in case of security attacks? Nidhi Setya is a question. Even, even in, in the virtual world, uh, the recent trend of the current trend which is going across is also of awakening. If any one of the virtual machine is attacked, if we are not taking care of the entire host or a partitioning on the, sorry, on the VMs, that's going to be in disasters. If the host is attacked, all VMs are getting to the down. That's another concern. In a physical environment, it is one phone basis. However, say, there are different technologies available from the different vendors who can build that wall, who can build that internal structure even virtual uh, networking tools are available. Using them, definitely uh, the protection is very much available in today's world. Uh, as we said, this uh, security or protection is a work in progress, it's an ongoing process. We cannot put some solution and then forget it. This has to be monitored continuously. Then only that is a very valid uh, solution. The next question here, uh, can't we develop a mechanism to avoid the security check over the external USB while being uh, attached to a PC? Can't we limit them to a limited identifications or some other way? Question is from Amit Saxena. Uh, probably what I understood is can we control the USB sticks using on the network? Yes, it is very much possible. There are different tools available even one way or two way or what is available, what can be made available, all those policies can be accepted. There are different softwares available to do that. Even it gives you an administrative alert saying that on what machine, what USB stick is being used, what is the outcome of it. Up to that level you can go and then give you an information. That's very much available. The next question here is, can you tell me how to start learning security testing? 
this is come on Mr. Huck is asking this question there are different institutes available for education purpose and this learning activity and even there are certifications available at the different angles and the different products you can go through them the next question here is What would be the straight educational path to jump into IT security after technical degree? This question is from Ashish Mishra. Probably I would recommend a uh, couple of things. One is uh, the local uh, any institute which teaches you on uh, the ethical hacking part of it. Or if you want to look at the bigger scope of it, there are certifications in terms of CISA, which is handled by the ISATA. And there are uh, law with in terms of legal activities which will have the cyber laws and uh, other things that are available in a different universities are providing those kind of uh, institutes. I think by that you can go through it and uh, as I said this is in the work in progress and ongoing. There is no end to learning. And there is one more question I infer so. Hello, I am Himanshu from eCore Technos. If an attacker attacks a network and he first hacks into a computer in some other country and then from the compromise system he hacks into the actual target, so what will be the procedure to trace the attacker and how can we stop all this? Uh, again, I have to repeat here that security is an ongoing process. The attacker will not directly come and hit you saying that I am getting into attack with your infrastructure or a network. It's always possible that it will use some via media. Even in one of the, my slides earlier, even I told about even our own company can be a mediator for hacking to some other organization. All these are very much possible. If it is a simple hack or something simple attack from something else which is not an organized event, there may be possibilities of getting the trace and then go back to the source. But in this advanced persistence set, what we are referring here, they make sure that you are misleaded, misguided, and at the end of it, there are no traces of getting hacked. In many of the cases in the early uh, beginning of my uh, session, when I said, I am hacked, I, I don't know. Even there will be such situation. Only when we will come to know that when they are getting published outside saying that you are hacked and here is the data. Then only we will come to know oh, I am hacked. In such a situation, continuous monitoring, alarming, alert, keeping the abreast of all those updates is the only thing we can protect. Uh, what are the newest threats now and how common people can have a problem? I think I have already addressed that. I, I have covered all the questions which are posted uh, on this. Is there anything new coming up? Hello? I think the questions are over now. Is there anything left out? A few more are there. Assign uh, them. Are you not getting them? According to you, what is the future in IT and its security as a career? This is a very good question, Ashish Mishra. Uh, now everyone looking into the safeguarding uh, the infrastructure because major of activity in any organization or industry are an IT base. So security is a must. And by that means wherever there is an IT for a business you need to be secure. You need, need to have it in a safe. But by Indian law and by Indian uh, government which are streamlining only for few industries by uh, law enforcement in terms of finance sector, for telecom sector or something else, yeah, for the different sectors. It is not going, it's not applicable as of now to every industry across the board, but which is not far away, 
which will definitely come in in very short span saying that everyone needs to be compliant for one or the other thing so the it security is one of the hot topics now provided we are equipped with uh, all those updated knowledge and uh, the fighting equipments this is going to be definitely a good career in near future the next question is whether raid will help to control the data theft this is my other one aditya raid will basically protect our data from you know safeguarding our own failures of the different hard disk within that storage or within that machine it directly will not act as a uh, safeguarding or in control to uh, protect our data theft but if in case of failure or if that theft results into some hard disk failure that raid can help but directly i don't see any relevance in that and there is another question here what is the source of these analysis question 2 are they authentic and can be replied i think it should be relied upon in my uh, understanding but it is said replied upon it is question from jitendra goel yes these are very authentic that's what i said idg media is a well known worldwide media which we under the surveys across the globe with the senior uh, industry leaders be it in cisos be it in cio be it in ceo be it in cfo and these are really published and they are really authentic it can be relied definitely it is reliable information you said it is replied upon it is relied upon yes definitely you can rely upon well thanks mr arani for your session on continued focus on it security it was indeed a great session i would also like to thank all our participants for the support in making this webinar a success the recording of this webinar will be available on techic.com by evening thank you all have a great evening Thank you very much thanks everyone for joining us thanks a lot and take care be safe thank you very much